so let's see how to use this while do while do until and for each loops that are uh, yet to be completed today so let's go to developer and take visual basic i'll insert a new module so over here so i would like to show you while loop or you can call it as do while loop so there are two ways in which you can use this i'll show you that see the syntax for this how exactly you have to use this is you begin with do while you provide a condition over here only if the condition is true you would like to loop the statements over here so i'll provide here as block of statements and we'll end it with loop this is first type i'll uh, give an example on this sub use do while let me give this so i'll take a, a variable here dim int x as integer and i'll use an input box to provide input to this int x variable so i'll say enter a number i would like to receive a number as an input over here and while so i'll start the loop and say do while while the x value this int x value is less than 10 okay you need to increment it so even before i increment i would like to display this int x value and i'll say int x equals int x plus 1 i'm incrementing it and i'll end it with loop see this program is just to show you how these loops work okay the application part will come later i'll tell you where you can use these loops say as much as uh, you have i have used the macros most of the times we'll use only this for loop or for each so in very less cases we go for do while do until these things and uh, you need to be really careful with the symbols that you use here plus minus these things even a small change of these things will end up in an infinite loop your program will not stop at all so you need to forcefully shut the excel uh, application in that case so take extra care while you use these kind of loops other than for for loop and for each loop you need to be a little more careful while using it now let me start it i'm using f8 to run it in debug mode see i'll enter a number uh anything greater than 10 let me provide and say 12 you see the condition is false int x value is 12 and it is not less than 10 you see what happens it doesn't execute any of these lines because the condition is false only if your condition is true the loop starts and it will stop once it again becomes false so as long as your condition is true the loop keeps running now let me give 5 over here so it is less than 10 so it will start looping so it displays 5 it increments to 6 then it will show me 6 so if i keep running it this way it will show me 8 9 once it reaches 10 it will stop this we have not provided equal to 10 so we have said the number should be less than 10 so once int x value reaches 10 the loop stops so the loop stopping condition here is the uh, int x value should reach 10 see this is one way of applying this do while loop now let me provide the condition after this loop keyword i'll change this 
I'll create a copy of this team. So I'll just exchange the location of providing the condition. So this is also do while loop only. You see the way it differs in functioning. Okay, so do while I'll give two over here to change the macro name. I'll cut this condition and then put it here according to this syntax. So now let me again use F8 over here. See, in text value, I'll provide 22. So it will execute. It will display the value. It will also increment. But now you see it is checking whether in text value is less than 10. If it is true, the loop will continue. If it is false, it will just come out of the loop. You can see it jumped to end sub now. Now let me again execute this. This time I'll provide a value less than 10. I have given seven for index. So you can check the value over here when you place your cursor on the variable. So it says seven, seven will be displayed. I'll again check the condition now. Index value, is it less than 10? It's true, so it will continue. It will continue this way until it is equal to 10. So once it is equal to 10, it will not show me. So it will show me only till 9 over here. Okay. So this is the second method. See why, why, when you should be using it. I'll tell you. See the first condition you can see. If your condition was not true. It never allowed you to execute the lines inside the loop at all. But in the second case, it will allow you at least once. The difference is, in the first case, the condition is checked in the beginning of the loop itself. Only if your condition is true, it allowed you to execute the loop. In the second method, you saw that the condition is being checked at the end of the loop. So, in the beginning, whatever lines you have provided, it will execute once, even before checking the condition. So once your condition is false, so it will not go further. That's when the loop will stop. Right? So next, let's see another loop. Its name is do until loop. Do until loop. So it works in the opposite way of this while loop. While loop will execute only if the condition is true. But until loop will execute only if the condition is false. So let's show you this. So you begin with do. Until is again a keyword. You will provide a condition over here. And you'll provide the block of statements after that. And you'll end it with loop. So let me give you an example over here. So I'll, let us take the same example that we checked for while loop here. I'll change this to do until So I'll change this one as well. So we provide until over here. And I'll change this to minus. So you need to check this. F8. I'll provide a value greater than 10. So let me give a smaller value. Let's say 13. See, is 13 less than 10? No. So it will continue. See, for until loop to continue, the condition should fail. So it keeps on looping until the condition becomes true. Okay, so that's how this until loop functions. It is the reverse of your while loop. How exactly your while loop functions, it's the reverse of it. Now let me run it. You can see here. That's the reason I am using the subtraction over there. So now you can see it's it's 13. Now it will reduce to 12. You can see 12. 
again 11 10 also is displayed next 9 so 9 is less than 10 this condition became true so it stopped the loop until loop works in this manner now let me show you the second method same way how we had it for a while loop even for until loop you you can apply it in two different ways either provide the condition in the beginning of the loop or you provide it at the end of the loop anyways it will work but check the scenario how exactly where you want to provide a which type of loop so first type or second type Depending on the scenario, it will change. Now I'll place this condition after the loop. So over here, at the end of the loop, I'll provide the condition. So it's the same thing again. I just change the position of the condition over here. Let us run this again. So this time I'll provide a value 3. 3 is less than 10. You see what happens. It will display the value for me. It will decrement it. So now you can see index value is 2. So 2 is less than 10. The condition is true. So the loop will stop. It will not continue. For it to continue, your condition should fail. So it keeps on looping until your condition becomes true. So this time let us give 14. I'll run this again. 14. It will reduce and it will display me 13. It will reduce and again display me 12. So it will display me until it is 9. And once it becomes 9, it will stop the loop. So that's how do until loop functions. So we saw do until do while so I also told you when we don't have any specific number of times to run the macro when we are not sure of it, we only have a condition to check as to when the macro has to stop, the loop has to stop. That's when we are going to use do, do while or do until. Now I'll be showing you the use of for each loop. This is a special kind which is used to loop through objects so whenever you have set of objects to loop through that's when you go choose for it now for this syntax is like this you begin with for and say each object so which object you are looping through and in which collection the object is present so what do we mean by object and collection here so let me specify so in a workbook you have multiple sheets so your the number of sheets present in your workbook is the collection and an individual sheet in that collection is the object here in the same manner you have selected hundreds of cells at once let's say in that each cell becomes an object and the range of cell you selected is the collection so this is how you can loop through so, and uh, you can use it for automation purpose. So I was telling you using VBA you can do such things uh, wherein you can refer to numerous number of files open one by one copy and paste. So you can use for each loop over there and again uh, if you want to apply some effect of conditional formatting on your cells. You could also use this for each loop for that so that it will check every cell in your selection and also you want to export all the charts in your report that you have created to the ppt so for all these things you can use this for each loop okay so we begin with for each we provide the object there and the collection of that objects now within this you will give the block of statements to execute and you will end it with loop I'm sorry 
next and you'll say object so this is how for each loop has to be given now let us take an example to execute this now here in sheet one i would like to provide some numbers i'll use rand between function to quickly generate random numbers between 150 to 900 let's say or let's give thousand i'll copy this and paste it as values so that i i don't see any changes in the numbers later now in this selection i would like to highlight all those numbers greater than 500 in blue color let's say i have a task of this to perform now if i have to do this i should check each cell over here and i when whichever cell satisfies the condition that i have provided that cell should be colored to blue so let's see how to achieve that using for each loop i'll say sub i'll say color cells 500 something like this. so first of all i need a variable to store the object and i also need a variable to refer to the collection of those objects so now to refer to these cells i have to declare a variable and set these cells that is the collection of cells to that variable and also i require another variable to refer to each cell within this collection let's go here let's say dim each c or each cell as range and dim selected range as range so even a single cell is referred to as range in this vb now let's go here i need to use set keyword see whenever your data type is of object type and if it is not a data type used to represent any value like number text string date so we are not trying to refer to it as that it's an object type that we are referring to so when your data type is of an object type you need to use set keyword to set values to it to assign values to it you need to use this i'll say select range so which range you provide here so how it should be referred to as select range so i'll say sheet 1 c3 to m20 so in sheet 1 i am referring to cells c3 to m20 so that's all there is no property used here i'm only providing the address after i'm done with this i should start with for each and say each cell the individual cell each cell in selected range so i have to check each cell here if each cell is greater than 500 then now every cell over there is referred to as each cell only the variable name that i have provided so i'll say each cell should be colored if it is greater than 500 if not it should just come out of this loop i mean uh, it should check for the next cell value only if that cell has got a number greater than 500 it will color otherwise no so now i'll say interior dot color is equal to you can say rgb so for blue we have 00 255 this is the rgb value or you could also just say vb blue uh, there are multiple ways in which you can set the color so i am going to take this rgb value and i'll end it with end if here only if the cell that is lo getting looped has got a value greater than 500 then color it 
see i also missed a property here i'm checking its value i need to provide dot value here after this we should not forget to close the loop next each cell the object name has to appear here now let us run using f8 see we, it has taken the range of cells c3 to m20 in sheet 1 now it takes every cell in that range that we have selected see what is the each cell value 867 let's check 867 is the first cell value so it is greater than 500 now let's see whether it's going to apply the color you check the color is applied see i can see the font color is not visible to me so what i can do in the program itself i'll also change the font color if the condition is true i also want the font color to change to white i'll just say 255 255 and 255 when you give this this is the white colors code here and i can also drag it back like this so i want this line to execute now i'll again press f8 now check so let us run again f8 this value is greater than 500 so it's oh i'm sorry this should be font color now we can check the font is white the background is blue so you can apply such changes here so next cell let's see which cell it takes so this cell value is 728 so it will go by this order it will first navigate through all columns and then it will come down to the next row so it will check all the numbers that are available here in this manner and it will color all the cells whose value is greater than 500. Now let me run this through F5. You can see the change here. All cells which are greater than 500, only they are colored in this manner. Now that was about for each loop over here. Now consider using a nested loop. So nested loop is a for loop inside a for loop or a while loop inside a for loop so you can use anything like this but you should first analyze how you how exactly you want to loop them and how you want to nest them so it all depends on your requirement here so for simplicity and to make you understand i am taking two for loops so the basic loop that we learned in the beginning i'm just using the same two for loops over here now the scenario that I'm using that over here is to print numbers over here. Now let's say I want to print serial numbers in cells over here. Now when I am doing it, I want to print it in columns. So only five columns need to be considered. And after it has printed till five, the number should continue till it reaches so the number that i have provided it should loop through like that so some strange kind of example i'll i'll just take that see for nested loop as i said you're placing one loop within another loop and the combination of the loops can be anything it all depends on your requirement here i'm taking nested loops example and the macro is macro to print serial numbers in a range of cell okay so we begin with sub print sl number I'll just get this. See, we are implementing two for loops. So there should be two counter variables. I'll take dim 
cv1 first counter variable as integer let's say and then cv2 second counter variable as integer and i'll also take two more variables over here uh, let's decide that later so we'll begin with this so i want to print this in sheet 2 let's start off and then come and declare the variables here for cv1 or counter variable 1 equals so how many times your outer loop has to run so this is depending on the number of times that you want to print in how many number of columns it has to run or something like that i'll just give a random value 1 to 5 here and within this i'll again provide another variable cv2 equals 1 to 10 over here okay so i need a variable to increment the row number only to take part in incrementation of the row so i'll say mm, row let's say int row something like this because row is a keyword i can't use that as a variable name i'll say this is as integer so now using sheet to range of so from where do you want to print it you give a column value and say c m percent int row dot value should be equal to so here i'll say cv2 and i'll increment the row value here int row equals int row plus one i'll end the inner loop the next cv2 even if you don't provide cv2 here it is fine but uh, to know which loop you have closed it's better to use the counter variable that you have used you will be able to identify easily and the outer loop i'll close here now let us execute this see how it works and i have not provided any initial value to this intro so let us give that over here in row i wanted to start from third row let's say let's take this you see c3 value will be one now cv1 is one cv2 is one i am printing cv2 value it is printing at c3 so you can see in c3 one is printed let me zoom it next the row number will increment it will become 4 so cv2 value so until the cv2 this inner loop is completed the outer loop will not increment so for every one value of the outer loop the inner loop will run completely and once the inner loop completes the outer loop will increment one more time so we are printing 1 to 10 1 to 10 five times let's go here i'll run it you check it's printing 1 to 10 once 1 to 10 twice third time and this is fourth time and below you have the fifth time so we are printing 1 to 10 five times like this now suppose i wanted it to print not exactly in the same column i wanted to change the rows for every one value like this so let's go here instead of this let, let me just copy the same so it's a different way of printing that's why i'm only changing the way of printing i'm still using the same 
method i'll say column over here so after every one value so i'll decide the column to change so after 1 to 10 so the next row should change so what i'll do i'll remove this i'll say cut from here after the inner loop is run the row number should increment until then the same row number should be considered but the column number should change for every iteration of inner loop so here we'll consider another variable to change the column value and say int column int is just to indicate it is an integer type variable that's all and uh, we can also differentiate it from the keyword column and row so i can't use row here because it's a keyword variable names cannot have keywords here so when you are using both cell uh, column value as a number and row value as a number we can't use this range See, it's an alphabet that we are using here to indicate a column. We cannot in increment alphabets, but numbers can be incremented. So when you are using both row number and column number, you are using cells here. This is another way of referring to your cells here. See, it will ask you to provide row index. Row index is int row. Column index, and say int column. So we are printing from third column again that is c column now if you want to change the column it's left to you so let's take from fifth column i'll just mention that here int column is equal to five fifth column and for every iteration of the inner loop the column value has to change for me Now let us run this and see the output. You can check here. Let me change it. Let us check what's happening exactly. press f8 you can also use these uh, break points see break points are also really effective when you have very big programs to run and simply you know pressing f8 until those lines are done so it's going to take a long time so people use break points for this i'll show you that also you can place a break point here so that so you will know where exactly this is changing. Fine. Now I'll press F5. It will run only till these lines. So it would have printed 1 to 10. So I again wanted to start printing it from the fifth column. Since I did not provide the column number as 5 here inside this. See? That is the reason it is taking different columns altogether. So I should always initiate the column number inside the first loop. That's the outermost loop. So then it will again start from the fifth column only. If I declare it outside, it's taking next to next columns and it's going on like that. Though it is changing the row number, it's not starting from the fifth column. So you can debug such things when you are in the debug mode when you are executing your macro in f8 this is these are the advantages now let us run now now we have got the desired output so it is printing till 10 five times it's repeating the same thing so you can also go this go execute it this way now if i want to print serial numbers as i said so there is no stoppage like this 1 to 10 and again it's starting from 1 to 10. Not this way. I want to 
continuously print the numbers that I provide here. How to do that? Let us see. So this macro will show you how to print the values continuously. So not like the one that we saw. Now let us run this. So it will print one over here in sheet two. And let me remove this. Then you will be able to understand it. Let me print it again. See one is printed. See again it will run. This time two is printed. So it will move on like this. It will keep on running like this until it reaches the end. See, we have got till 50. Now suppose I want to stop printing once the value is 35. I want to stop printing. I want to exit the loop. So then we can use this exit statement. So there is something known as exit for. I will show you in the same example. So what I will do. After this int i is incremented, we will check if int i is equal to 35 then exit for exit for is a keyword here which will exit the for loop and it will stop the macro and if you have any other lines to be executed after the for loop so if you have provided any other lines to execute those lines will execute but your for loop will stop it will come out of the for loop completely. So let us clear from here. When you run this, let's check. So you need to add an exit for over here also. And you can also say exit for, see if this is not sufficient because we have used a nested loop here, only one for loop is stopping. I also want to exit the macro. Let's say you can also say exit sub here. And I'll close end if. So this time, if you run it, you can see here it will print only till 34. So this was the previous example. Let me delete it. I'll again execute. Still taking it. Yes. Okay, so so this is how it will stop at 34. Once it is equal to 35, it will stop at 34 and it will exit the macro itself. Okay, Rajesh, then I'll stop the session here.